What is up, everybody? Hope you are having an awesome Friday and have had a uh, good week. Good news, we are opening back up for worship on Sunday. This Sunday, we will be meeting together at 1015 for worship. Worship only, no small groups, no Sunday night or Wednesday night services right now, but Sunday morning worship uh, is a thing. It's happening this Sunday uh, on uh, at Cave Spring, and so hopefully you'll be able to join us. There are some guidelines and things that we have put in place uh, to make sure that everyone is safe and uh, to minimize uh, contamination or contact or anything like that. You can read through those guidelines uh, on our Facebook page or you can watch the video that uh, myself and uh, Brother Brandon and Brother Scotty did last night on our Facebook Live. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to see you. If you can't come, if you don't feel comfortable coming, you or your parents, that's fine. Like grace abounds and uh, hopefully you'll be able to catch us online and be able to watch our online service. I uh, just want to share a quick word with you out of Scripture today. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Listen, it is our honor. It is our privilege to model Christ in both love and in service towards our family. Maybe you're not familiar with this passage. Maybe you uh, have never even heard it before. But as of today and as of hearing this message right now, you're accountable. You're now accountable to it. See, far too often the ones that we're supposed to love the most, the ones that we're supposed to cherish the most, the ones that we're uh, uh, not supposed to take for granted, um, the ones that are closest to us by blood and by proximity because we're living with them, are the ones that we do take for granted the most and the ones that we... We treat the worst and, um, you know, we, we kind of walk all over them and we don't, we don't oftentimes treat them too well. See, listen, we know about Jesus. We've uh, seen his life. We've seen his experience. We've seen how he has uh, modeled grace and love and forgiveness. We've learned from him. We've learned about for, uh, forgiveness and sacrifice. We know what it looks like because, again, he perfectly modeled that for us. See, and our families should be the ones who experience uh, that love and that grace, that forgiveness, all the things that Jesus Christ has done for us. Our families should be the ones that uh, experience that the most. Um, they should be the primary receivers of all of the things that Jesus Christ has done for us, Jesus, our family should be the ones who experiences it, it the most from our lives. We should be ready and eager and um, to display Jesus to our families. Why? Because when we demonstrate love and grace and all of the things that Jesus did and all of the things that Jesus is about, it multiplies. It uh, Grace gives birth to grace. Love gives birth to love. Forgiveness gives birth to forgiveness. It doesn't mean it's easy because if it was easy, then we would all do it and it wouldn't need to be a, commanded. We would, a commandment. We wouldn't need to be reminded of it. But it is commanded and we do need to be reminded of it because it's not easy. We have to consider this our calling. That we, should, we shouldn't just have affection for our families. That we are called to provide for our families. And sometimes, uh, a lot of times, provision for family means sacrifice. Sacrifice is setting aside our own wants, our own desires, uh, and sometimes our own needs to make the wants and needs uh, met in those who are close to us. And so, so often our selfishness, our pride, our self-interest, listen, selfishness and pride will kill every relationship that you will ever have if you allow it to flourish. But see, selfishness and pride, especially in families, self-interest, especially in families, have a way of uh, destroying and getting in the way of having healthy family relationships. Like we have to, we have to put aside ourselves. Uh, so let me ask you these questions. Can you put us down your phone? Can you put down your phone and give uh, your family your undivided attention? Uh, do you seek to serve your family and strive for their betterment? Are you seeking to grow in grace and sow seeds of grace in your family relationships? Consider this, your calling as a Christ follower is not only to love and to care for your, and to provide for your family physically or materialistically, but also provide for them spiritually too. And the best way to do this is to model Christ. And the only way that we can model Christ uh, in our family relationships is to know Christ. You can't model what you don't know. 
And so we should seek to be the brightest representation of Jesus that our family sees. Uh, you represent Jesus as um, your Savior and as your, um, your Redeemer as you serve your family. I mean, think about this. What if, we, what if you sought out family time instead of individual time? Um, what if you sought out time to spend time? What if you sought out to spend time with your family instead of just secluding yourself in your room all the time? What if you were the giver of gifts instead of the one seeking to receive all the time? You say, "Well, I don't have any money." Well, gifts don't gifts don't necessarily have to cost money. You can give the gift of time. You can give the gift of service. You can give the gift of cleaning the kitchen for your mom or doing laundry or something without complaining. I mean, you can give the gift of just having a a cheery disposition or having a sweet disposition or just being kind and compassionate to your brothers and sisters or to your parents? What if uh, you listened instead of tried to speak? What if you, uh, what if the words that you were using were used to uplift and encourage instead of drag down or complain? Um, what if, what if your family could trust what if your parents, what if your brothers and sisters could trust? What if they knew that if at any given moment you were working for the collective good of the entire family instead of just seeking out uh, betterment for yourself? What if you were just not looking out for yourself and you were looking out for the good of your whole family? Imagine how enriching your family life would be if they could trust you and they could know that you, you were looking out for the interest of everyone involved, of anyone in your family. Listen, Jesus loves and treats you this way. He tells us in his word that everything is going to work out for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So if God in Christ is treating you this way, then you are called, you are commanded to uh, treat your family this way. So here's the challenge. Um, I want you to do one nice thing uh, for your family. Actually, it would be great if you just spent the whole day doing nice things for your family. Um, if you could clean the house without being asked or, you know, write a nice note or a card or something uh, for your parents or whatever. Then tell your parents uh, or your brother, tell your parents, if you do it for your brother or sister or you do it for a family, whatever, it, whatever act of kindness is, um, is done, I want you to tell them to post it on the parent message, the parent group message that I have on Facebook so that all the other parents can read about it. All right, so they can brag on you a little bit. All right, it's okay, it's fine. We brag on our kids, it is what it is. All right, so that's your challenge today. Be kind to your brothers and sisters. Uh, take care of them, provide for them, physically, spiritually, materially, and then tell your parents, you know, when you do this, that they need to, they need to write about it on the parent message over on our uh, Facebook group message. All right, I love you guys. I miss you guys. If you need anything, Please reach out to me and let me know. Um, hopefully, I'll get to see you guys all Sunday. We can do like air high fives and stuff because we can't, we're not supposed to touch each other. All right. I love you guys. See you soon. Bye.